Hello, I'm Colin from 526C RoboJuice, and I'll be explaining the base on a robot. So we decided a four-motor drive with green inserts would work best for a robot and for handling it during intense situations. We decided a one-to-one -one gear ratio would work best with it, and screw joints to help with friction. Hi, my name is Austin from Team 526C and I will be explaining our intake. So our intake starts up, that's out of size. And if you put it down, so we have this, push it down, and then we have these custom ramps uh, that most teams probably will not have, which is to help us go up on the bar when we're scoring. So we have plastic, then metal, then plastic again, so it won't bend at all. And then we have a one motor, which is a green insert. And we originally had two, but we realized one is probably better. And then if we come right here, where you see all this weight, that was with earlier, our back was too heavy, and our uh, climb couldn't quite work yet. So we added this to, ba to balance it out. And then, when it comes to the travel, it does it pretty good. Uh, it, it's in there, and if you take it out, uh, it comes up pretty good. And then, right here we have this rubber band to help hold it in there, so it will, will not come out. And that's the intake. So I'm uh, Mark from 526C RoboJuice, and I'm here to explain the hang and the blocker mechanism. So with the hang, I basically just cut these plastic pieces that are uh, have a little ramp on them. Uh, so it kind of just ramps up the bar like uh, this. And then the standoffs, these little tiny standoffs are there so that when it does go on the bar, it kind of more uh, balances it and makes it uh, stay in place. Otherwise, like you can see here, the plastic isn't really fully touching. And the plastic's mostly just to get up there. And that's because uh, we see we saw that the balance was a little bit uh, too low when that was there, so we added the standoffs. And um, it's pretty good. It gets off the ground. It's a simple just drive up. And um, so that's the hang. And then now we're going to move on to the blocker. So now we're moving on to the uh, blocker. So one of the things we added was this one singular motor here. And that's so that uh, this thing can go up and down. So like when, during Auton, we can obviously flip the robot around, and when we bring this down, it goes under a lot better without jumping. That's meant for, yeah, obviously before when it was up like this with a lot of rubber band tension, it would jump. So I think that was a pretty good addition. And it also helps us with blocking. Like before, it goes down kind of easy. We have more rubber band tension, but um, when we hit it, it would go down. But now I can make the button go up. So it's a lot harder to go down, so you can actually like kind of throw it at the blocker, and it don't really move. And with the string, it was a really good idea because before we had plastic, and the plastic seemed to snap and be a little bit more weak. This, the tribal kind of gets absorbed in it and bounces off a lot better than the plastic did. So that's our blocker. Now we're going to move on. Hello, I'm Colin from 526C once again, and I'll be explaining the winds. Up first, we have this uh, ramp on the front side of the wings that help push up the tri ball over the bar. And then on the back side of our robot, we have a slightly bigger ramp that also pushes up the tri balls. For the wings, we decided to do locking wings because we had problems with the wings being pushed back in by the tri balls when we attempt to score. And when they're opened up, they lock quite easily. But when they close, they close quite well as well. So uh, I'm going to be explaining our skills strategy. Basically, for uh, driver skills and autonomous skills, it just starts the same way with um, the flywheel starting and the tri ball or the intake falling down onto the tri ball. Then you would obviously launch uh, some tri balls over. And, uh, you know, they would get all the travels over as much time as you can. We usually try to do that in about 30 seconds for uh, driver skills and uh, 35 for programming skills. Um, so during programming skills, uh, the flywheel would stop. It would drive over here, push in the two tri balls, and then it would drive backwards like this. 
it would bring uh, the thing down, drive backward like so. It would turn over here. Um, it would go up here like this. Then it would open the wings and drive forward, drive backward. Then it would turn here, go again. And we go at a little bit of an angle here to kind of funnel and make sure all of them get in. And then we would go backward, forward, backward again, and then forward again, and then stop the code. And then, oh, okay, and then for um, driver skills, we would do the exact same thing, except uh, when we're over here and done shooting all the tri balls, let me get back over here, but let me get over here, let me get done shooting the tri balls, we'd score those, and then I'd drive over here, there's usually a middle one right here that I would intake, and then I would drive over here, go through this side, and then I'd go over here, uh, flip around where the intake is, and push as many in on the side with the tri ball that'd be in my intake. Then I'd drive up over here, and I'd do the same thing with the wings open and pushing in. And that's our uh, skills. Hello, my name's Austin, and I am back. So today we're gonna explain the flywheel. We have two blue motors. We have a quick swap. And then we have a speed ratio with the smallest gear to the biggest gear. They are the thin gears. And then we have a weight on there to stop it from slowing down so we're able to shoot faster. Uh, the spacing had to be almost basically perfect to get this flywheel to work. Then we have two of the medium sized flex wheels. So we put them together to get the right surface area so that it wouldn't, the trouble would not hit the gears as we were launching to get the most accuracy as we can. And now here's an example. See you at Worlds, hopefully. hopefully.